In 2020, around 400,000 people died from malaria. In 2021, this number increased to 600,000, a 50% increase. And very saddest part is that most of them are children. My name is Cevair Çoban. I'm a medical doctor and professor and heading a division of malaria immunology. Our aim is to understand malaria disease and ultimately to defeat it. Historic sources suggest that malaria has been with us, with humans, for thousands of years. It killed many people more than wars. But only about 150 years ago, we discovered that this disease is caused by parasites and these parasites are transmitted via mosquitoes. And currently, about 100 countries are suffering from this disease, mainly in Africa, Southeast Asia, and South America. You can take many drugs like mefloquine or malaron. Um, that is easy to prevent. Or if you get sick, you can be treated by artemisin. But the problem is that all over the world, most of the parasites now have a drug resistance. Our lab was set up to work towards vaccine to prevent and drugs to treat malaria. We have many talented researchers to tackle this problem. There are many aspects of malaria that most people are unaware of. For example, hundreds of millions of people get infected each year. They recover but suffer from consequences such as bone loss. My name is Michelle Lee, an assistant professor at the University of Tokyo, and I'm studying about the pathology of malaria within the bone marrow. The byproduct of the parasite accumulate in the bone marrow, and that causes chronic inflammation within the bone marrow and eventually causes bone loss. To investigate this problem, we use micro CT scan to observe and measure the bone structure during malaria infection in mice. I also study the issue of reinfection. Previously infected people can gain partial immunity to reduce the disease severity. However, people can get reinfected and that has the possibility of causing tissue damage and contribute to transmission through mosquito. We explored ways to improve the immune system to fight against reinfection. There is a structure in the secondary lymphoid organ called the germ center, a site where antibody producing cells are made. If we can encourage germinal center formation through vaccination, we can produce high quality antibody to fight against reinfection. Hi, my name is Julia Matsuda Pop, and I am a PhD student working on cerebral malaria. Cerebral malaria is a neurological complication which leads people into coma. Exactly how cerebral malaria happens is not well understood, and we need to see inside the brain to better explore them. So we use the technique to make tissue more transparent, called cubic, and it allows us to visualize the parasites in the brain during cerebral malaria. So far we've found that the parasites accumulate in a particular part of the brain, which is called the olfactory bulb. And we are working to see if there is something special about this region, olfactory bulb, which draws in the parasites. And once we understand that, I hope the knowledge leads to some kind of better diagnostic measure. If you look at the history of treatment of malaria, our records start with as early as 17th century. In the South America, people were treating malaria by the barks of the kinakina tree, the basis of famous anti-malarial drug kinin. Modern malaria drugs are derived from that. And recently we have better drug, uh, which is artemisin, different than those kinin-based drugs. In theory, malaria is a preventable disease. If we avoid the mosquitoes by just simple low-tech bed nets, we can avoid malaria. Or if we clean up the mosquito breeding areas, it is so easy to prevent. But the problem is that there are a lot of social, economical, or political factors avoiding this. So malaria has been with us for a long time. We will not eradicate it so soon. But with the new understanding, new technologies and uh, new intervention strategies, we can tackle and eradicate this disease. We did it once with smallpox, but why not with malaria? <laughs>